Everyone loves a good horror film. Well, maybe not everyone, but there definitely is an audience for it. From slashers to monsters, aliens to predators, and even a creepypasta character has made it onto the mainstream big screen. While these types of characters share many similarities, they all have something unique and special about them that sets them apart from the crowd of horror antagonists. But which of these horror icons will survive the night? Today, we find that out. Today, we rewind Rumble. This horror free-for-all consists of eight different horror characters. These include Freddy Krueger, the Xenomorph Queen, Pinhead, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, The Predator, Ash Williams, and Slenderman. Now before anyone says that Slenderman isn't a horror movie character, don't forget that dreadful Slenderman movie that came out back in August of 2018. As such, we will only be using feats from the movie and not the collection of creepypasta documents or games. With all that in mind, let's break down each member. Jason Voorhees was born in the small town of Crystal Lake on June 13, 1946 to Elias and Pamela Voorhees. Jason was afflicted with severe facial deformities, an abnormally large head, and mental disabilities. Jason's mass murders began in the summer of 1984 when he learned of a new group of teenagers occupying the nearby picnic lodge. Determined to destroy the trespassers, he began to watch the group closely and stalk them to their death. Jason is very tough to put down as he survived gunshots and stab wounds with ease. Even hanging him isn't enough to keep him down for good. He is very skilled at using his machete, and he's strong enough to rip off people's limbs and decapitate his foes with a single punch. Next up, we have Michael Myers. As a six-year-old child, Michael was admitted into a psychiatric hospital for murdering his older sister, Judith Myers. After nearly 15 years of captivity, Myers broke out of the asylum and for 23 years hunts down the rest of his family to kill them. On top of his superhuman strength and expertise in the art of killing, Michael is not one who would be accepted into hell, making him technically immortal. He's lifted entire tombstones, stabbed through many people before, and his body count is up there in the 80s. Moving on, we have Freddy Krueger. Frederick Charles Krueger was essentially born in an insane asylum. His mother Amanda was a nun who worked at the asylum taking care of the patients. As an adult, Freddy had raised a daughter with his loving wife. However, behind that peaceful facade was a horrific desire for vengeance for all the abuse and bullying that took place during his childhood. Though Freddy may be at his best in the dream world, which this battle will not be including, he's still a powerful force in his own right. He's able to kill people with ease, and his skeleton alone took on two grown men with shotguns. He's even held his own against Jason in the past, though his biggest flaw is his fear of fire. And now for Movie Slenderman, and the scariest thing about Movie Slenderman might actually be his Rotten Tomatoes score. And now that I think about it, Movie Slenderman might not actually be a horror film character, he just might be a horrible film character. Get it? Uh, Alright, I'll move on. But to be fair, it's not like Creepypasta Slenderman was a developed character to begin with. Anyway, Movie Slenderman is very similar to Creepypasta Slenderman with his ability to teleport, and at the beginning of the film we see him easily toppling a tree, and he can use his tentacles to lift and suffocate humans, though he hasn't shown any impressive durability feats, but he is described to be made out of bioelectricity in the film, something unique to the film. Next, we have the Xenomorph Queen. In every hive, the queen is the largest and most intelligent female. At roughly 20 feet tall, the queen is tasked with regulating the xenomorph hive. She has the ability to launch acid, has enhanced senses, and regeneration. The queen can easily survive many rounds of gunfire and has impressive strength. After describing the alien, it's only natural to bring up the predator. The Yajua predator is technically an alien too, as the species originates from a planet known as Yajua Prime. The predators are an extraterrestrial race of warriors and hunters who travel the galaxy seeking dangerous quarries to hunt for sport and honor. While they do live in nomadic tribes, they are a highly advanced race and possess dangerous technology to help with their efforts. Their common arsenal includes the likes of a combi stick, net gun, plasma caster, and smart disc. Moving on, we have Ash Williams. Before all the madness, Ash Williams was just your average S-Smart employee and casual ladies man. But then he and his friends took a small vacation to an abandoned cabin in the woods. Yup. 
it's the abandoned cabin cliche. We all know where this is going. Ash was confronted by a recorded incantation that released demonic spirits possessing all of his friends. This forces Ash to kill everyone he loves with various cabin equipment out of self-defense. His most iconic weapon, of course, is his chainsaw and boomstick gun. And last but not least, we have Pinhead. Who you calling Pinhead? Who are we calling Pinhead? Well, Elliot Spencer, that's who. Elliot at first was just a normal human, a soldier, and suddenly out of the blue, he was abducted by an extra-dimensional order of demons known as the Cenobites. Soon after, he became leader of these demons and was known as Pinhead. His abilities include electric manipulation, element manipulation, teleportation, and size manipulation. His greatest strength is also his greatest weakness, which is the Lamet configuration box. He can use it to manipulate the world around him, or it can be used to destroy him by reverting him back to human form. And now, let's get ready for the fight. This battle will take place on Earth and remember, there is no prep time. Once that circumstance bar has finally loaded, it's time to rewind rumble. Oh! <laughs> 
Hopefully you enjoyed that animation, and if you did, super special thanks to Team Animation Rewind's Gabriel M. I'd also like to thank Miss X and MLG Avocado slash Biffweed for helping out with the research slash notes. Thanks, and enjoy the post analysis. I'm not exactly sure how scary sprite animations can be, but I do know how scary post-analysis flame wars could be, which makes it now time for the scariest part of the video, the flame war response to Jason Voorhees winning. The three biggest things that you need to understand is that circumstance, location, and incarnation played a huge role in Jason's victory. While pretty much every character on this roster has some sort of no limits fallacy demon resurrecting hacks that could make this battle pretty much endless, a battle winner would have to be chosen on who can survive the longest without dying or decapitating at least once. And to be fair, the Xenomorph Queen and the Predator probably have the best stats in Arsenal among everyone on this roster, but remember, this is a free-for-all. Let me put it like this, if we threw everyone into a cage, the Xenomorph Queen and the Predator will most likely, if not certainly, choose to fight each other immediately. They have a nasty rivalry and a natural connection to hate each other and fight each other the most. This is important to understand because in such a battle, one of them is going to die, and whoever walks it alive is going to be extremely battered, as it is a close fight. Spoiler alert, but in the movie, they were both kinda even, and in the last battle, while the alien queen may have ended up drowning and dead, we don't see her die on screen, but it might have been implied. And both creatures are very close in stats, to the point where after they naturally go for each other's throats, it doesn't matter who comes out alive because the survivor is close to death anyway. Jason Michael and Freddy are naturally going to go after each other right away as well. Jason has a clear advantage over Freddy since Freddy won't have access to the dream world. Myers may be the embodiment of evil, but there's still something very human about him. You realize that in the vulnerable way he conducts himself, moving cautiously and stalking people for hours at a time, he's clearly still a human, although one possessed by evil. Jason is a wild savage. He charges into everything and fights brutally. He would just rip Myers apart. He's also much more resistant to injury, so Meyer's usual tricks really wouldn't work. He could take Meyer's knife or garroting wire and just keep tricking him. Jason essentially has a first class demon attached to his soul, this being why it's so easy for him to resurrect again and again and again and again. This being the case, stabbing him, punching him, crushing him, none of it will matter in regards to Jason versus Michael. And I need to make it clear that regenerating while still alive is different than dying and resurrecting. Thus, Jason will overpower Meyer's, and let's not forget Jason was strong enough to to literally punch someone's head off. This leaves us with Jason, Movie Slenderman, Pinhead, and Ash Williams. Ash Williams, while has shown superhuman feats of speed, dodging bullets, and his durability is wall level, which is crazy for a human, he lacks the regeneration hacks that most of his competition on this roster has. Movie Slenderman has no evidence of being more durable than Creepypasta Slenderman, and if that's any indicator, you know he's not gonna last long, as he has far worse feats compared to his Creepypasta account. Counterpart. And that leaves us with Jason versus Pinhead. Pinhead is going to be Jason's biggest competition, and this is a super close call between Pinhead and Jason for that number one crown. Pinhead in the original Hellbound Hearts book can be argued as planet level, but in the movies his stats are fairly close to Jason's. What separates Pinhead from Jason is that Pinhead can revert back down to his human form. All it really takes is for Jason to take the Lamet configuration box from Pinhead and use it again against him. Solving the box isn't exactly a matter of educational or mathematical intelligence, rather it takes an evil-wielded or controlled spirit to harness its power. I do believe that the demon inside Jason can handle the box quite well on its own. While they are from different universes, so the layering and leveling of dimensional demons is not consistent, if a normal human like Elliot can do it with some conditioning, Jason should be fine with handling it in my opinion. Physically taking the box from Pinhead will be a challenge, but it won't be impossible, especially since it'll be tough to multitask hiding the box and blocking attacks at the same time. Once Pinhead becomes Elliot again, Jason is essentially victorious, making the winner of this rumble, Jason Voorhees. Now hopefully you did enjoy this Halloween special, and next Halloween, if you want to see a rematch with a larger roster in a different circumstance, all you have to do is like this video. If this video gets 5,000 likes, we'll have a bigger and better free-for-all for next October. Don't forget to comment down your own ideas and stay tuned as the next fighters are going to be revealed. 
on the next episode of Rewind Rumble. Hey! Mm-hmm. <clears throat>